So our video yesterday really focused on a lot of certainly worry going into the Tory party because they are being very, very much haunted by their failings of Brexit past and now Brexit present is, is coming home for Christmas. <laughs> and to follow with this, of course, they are worried about the ghost of Brexit future. Yes, many of the uh, certainly members in the in the Tory party are incredibly worried that there is going to be the ghost of Nigel Farage rising from the grave to wreak his terrible vengeance upon the Tory party and thus steal many of their votes, just as UKIP did. Like I say, the original intention of, of UKIP, even stated by Nigel Farage, was to move the Tory party uh, from certainly being a what what Farage said a right centrist party back to being a more hard right party, and very much so as, as, as he as he said he he has very much succeeded in that. In fact, they've gone even more, shall we say, hard right, even even more than I think Nigel Farage had even hoped for. But there are still those uh, in the party we talked about yesterday, Lord Carruthers. Um, I'll be going over him today again, pretty Patel setting up this new. Um, conservatives, uh, conservative action for democracy because they believe that um, the party is not hard right enough. <laughs> uh, yeah, um, but many of them are also, as we said, worried about the spectre of a potential return of Nigel Farage. Like I say, Reform UK recent pollings have shown that they're polling roughly around eight percent. Um, that would be enough in many seats potentially to secure secure definitely a Tory loss and pull definitely many of the uh, sort of traditional Tory votes uh, go back to them just as UKIP did and we would definitely see the potential of a like I say a reform UK basically just repeating UKIP's tactics what their intention would be this time don't really know. Maybe they would just feed, of course, off the um, essentially what the, the Tory party failures and not everything, and essentially try and push them more and more into right wing positions on this fact, just exactly the same way UKIP did. So, uh, as of course, uh, before we go getting into this, because uh, it's again quite an interesting read, because like I say, many, many Tories are certainly going to be quite terrified at this Christmas of the ghost of Nigel future, <laughs> shall we say. So, um, as always, please remember to hit that like, share and subscribe button. And of course, down below, there are links to my Patreon page, my one station link called Buy Me Coffee, where you can all buy me coffee, the YouTube thank you button, and of course, the Pony Club down below as well. Now, remember to my Pony Club, as like I say, um, this Wednesday, we will be doing the big review of the year. So it's going to be quite a long video. And like I say, if you want to get access to that, like I say, you can join the Pony Club or you can join the Patreon as well. Um, and like I say, then you will sort of you know get access to that video and you will also get access to the many other uh, videos that I've made throughout the year as well. So as always, guys, uh, thank you very much to all those people who do help and support the channel, even if you do just hit the like and share button. So. Over we go to this today to see more Tory panicking <laughs> at the potential return, or, or in this case, the right-wing insurgency, as it's been talked about. So, like I say, this comes from The Guardian, with the title of Tories at Risk from Right-Wing Insurgency Wards Wands Donor Lord Carruds. Is it Carruds or Carud Carruds? I don't know now. Um, anyway, here we go. So the Conservative Party is under threat of a right-wing insurgency after a, quote, drag to the left under Rishi Sunak. One of its biggest recent donors has warned amid growing tensions on the Tory right. Certainly, absolutely not. This The, the party has not been dragged to the left. I mean, this just goes to show you how, how out of touch and how out of touch reality they are. You know, the, Rishi Sunak and Jeremy Hunt were faced with this massive black hole in the budget. So they had to fill it one way or another. And one way they did that is, of course, they had to, as we saw, raise taxes. This has annoyed a lot on the Tory right. Hence why, although it's a drag to the left, that all they did was raise taxes because of the type of ridiculous policies that this guy, certainly Lord Carruthers, would want under 
uh, certainly another Boris Johnson government potentially, but also uh, the what Liz trusted. <laughs> so, <laughs> so Peter Carruthers, a peer who was given the party more than three point five million, said that the Conservatives were quote no longer a centre right party, and under Sunak who was adding that he had refused to go back back it financially until it changed course. His intervention comes as the latest opinion poll from The Observer shows the support for reform, the successor to the Brexit party, is up to 8% of the vote, up two points and almost neck and neck now with the Lib Dems. The poll also found that a fifth of voters, at least 19%, are considering voting for reform. This includes at least 23% of the 2019 Conservative voters and 11% of the 2019 Labour voters. In a sign of political pressures already facing Sunak, Corridors, a former Tory co-treasurer, said that the recent tax-rising budget, as well as the policies over Brexit and immigration, meant that the party could face a threat from the reform should Nigel Farage opt to lead it in the run-up to the next general election. There is a conduit for a right-leaning centre-right uh, people to find a new home, and that's the reform, especially if Farage comes out and says that he is going to lead the reform party, he told The Observer. What you're seeing today is a coup and a hijacking of the Conservative Party by centre-left-leaning people. Centre-left-leaning people? Um... Rishi Sunak is in no way, shape, or form centre-left. Neither is Jeremy Hunt. Um, I would really struggle to really look at any Tory and describe them as centre-left currently in Parliament. Um, absolutely not. Centre-right, yeah. Absolutely. I could definitely see that. But centre-left? No way. Absolutely no way. <laughs> But again, where have all these people come in? Where have they all infiltrated from? <laughs> just, it's Honestly, this just goes to show you how out of touch this guy seriously is. But there you go. Um, so the senior conservatives that I've spoken to, he continued with, also are frustrated, saying something is going to come to a head because the members don't want Rishi Sunak. The odds are stacked against him. So long as the party is centre-left, it's really not, but there you go, then I don't consider it a Conservative party. But again, I was also probably just going to show you how right-wing this guy is, to think to say that in his view, the current Conservative party is centre-left. That's laughable in, in, in so many regards, but there you go. But he continues, I will donate to the Conservative party, the true Conservative Party, which is a centre-right party. I will not donate to any centre-left party. Meanwhile, Richard Trice and the current reform leader told The Observer the Tories had, quote, betrayed the country, including over Brexit, saying, I want the Tories out, he said. I want them destroyed. They have ruined our economy and people are underestimating us. They don't believe we... Uh, we will stand in the 630 seats. I already have 600 ready to go. That's, again, a, that's a very big threat, but we'll have to see what happens. He added, Nigel, or Nigel Farage, but Nigel, rang me up the other day and said, uh, the day that we got 8%, remember this day, it took UKIP 19 years to get 8%. This challenge demonstrates the difficulties facing Sunak as he attempts to stabilise the party's fortunes, including the internal feuding to try and restore faith in the economy. Some Tories believe that having a won <clears throat> these huge numbers of pro-Brexit voters at the last election, they are now more vulnerable to the emergence of a party on the right. While reforms um, support remains low, it could end up costing the Tory seats should it win over a chunk of voters, which is, again, the exact same thing that UKIP did. It put the fear of, of, of you know, it put the fear into them of this spectre of you know of Nigel Christmas future of what may happen and they were like oh no um tell you what we'll we'll beat UKIP once and for all we'll just have this referendum job over now the interesting thing we haven't seen yet while we have seen and even Richard Trice does say that there are uh Tory councillors 
walking over to UKIP. We have not yet heard of any threats of Tory MPs threatening to defect. That was one of the big things that David Cameron had to deal with. The fact that there were these Tory MPs, well, at least 13 of them at the time, most of the ERG, threatening that if you do not give us a vote, we will walk over and become UKIP. That was the threat. That was the threat they had to deal with. So far, that has not happened. It might have done maybe in private, but we haven't heard certainly publicly if that is the case. But given the way and how fractured the current Tory party is, um, that could be possible. That could be very, very well be possible. But anyway, back to it. MPs told The Observer that they believed the issues of the refugees crossing the channel in small boats risk delivering voters back to reform. Jonathan Gillis, a Redwall Tory MP, who led a rebellion over the asylum seeking policies last week, warned that there would be political consequences for failing to tackle the issue. Well, we've talked about how you are failing to tackle the issue from basic, very simple things. You want to stop these small boats? Set up a safe route across the channel. Small boats. Stopped. Instantly. <laughs> That's all they have to do. Anyway, he said, if the Conservative Party doesn't deliver on stopping illegal immigration and getting people deported to Rwanda, Albania and other safe countries, the Conservative Party will be sacked by the electorate. And Rishi Sunak will be the leader of the opposition, not the Prime Minister, after the next general election, he said. Uh, again, even though we have these, these policies in place of like deporting people to Rwanda, that's not stopped people coming. And bear in mind, as we've said before, these numbers of, of, of people um, coming here as asylum seekers, as many of these people on these boats are, genuine asylum seekers, they've got every right to, to be able to sort of do that. And the thing is, the Conservatives, and particularly Theresa, really starting back at Theresa May, really, when she was at the Home Office, um, she was very much responsible for breaking this, as was Pretty Patel. They have broken the system so completely that it's become its own problem now. And they just cannot seem to even get a grip of their own problem that they created. Like I say, this whole issue around immigration, asylum seekers, is just a non-issue. If you are so worried about numbers, this exact same argument can be applied to the people who are born this year in the UK. You know, it, it, it sounds silly, but it, it's true. It's it's the worried about numbers and the consequences of, of, of those numbers, of what this would be. Well, those issues that like go into the housing crisis, it's not asylum seekers that have been causing this housing crisis for the past 10 years. It is not asylum seekers that have been causing you know, the crisis in the NHS, in schools, et cetera, et cetera. It's just an excuse that they are trying to use to get people to realize that those problems caused in those areas were actually caused by the Conservative Party. But eventually it will sink in. Um, anyway, he continues saying, uh, reform will come along and take enough of our vote to let Labour sneak through the middle and get back into power. We need to show that we can deliver. A former cabinet minister said that MPs are right to worry. If we fail to deliver on the small boats, we will be our flank will be wide open. But in fairness to the government, they have shown clear direction in this regard. Carudas, who um, was handed his peerage by Boris Johnson, led a campaign over the summer to have Boris Johnson reinstated as the leadership candidate, and he is now funding the newly formed Conservative Democratic Organisation which aims to give members more power of the MP selection and the leadership election. He said that thousands of members were already involved and this would help, he would use his, quote, deep pockets to ensure the party changed course. And again, um, this is also a, a very wide reason why we need to really change money in politics, because quite frankly, one guy with deep enough pockets should not be allowed to uh, physically, basically buy his direction of of the conservative party that should not be allowed and certainly an issue that labor could certainly feed into if they if they wanted to and go in heavily in for sort of how parties are funded etc which i think they should absolutely do but anyway um 
what we've seen since 2010 is an engineering of the Conservative Party to take us to the centre, possibly to the left. Yeah, this, this just goes to show how, how right-wing this guy, if he thinks that the Conservative Party is being trying to take in, uh, to the centre and possibly even to the left, what words fail me honestly they, they do um anyway but there we go anyway can you, we'll continue with this anyway and anyway, possibly to the left and there's a lot of mps out there that we consider are quote not conservative he said oh my word you, I, I would ask him for names. Who do you consider not to be conservative? <laughs> anyway, he said, we are a centre-right conservative organisation that wants to empower the members to stick to our principles. We think the Conservative Party has been infiltrated by non-conservatives. <laughs> Jeremy Hunt, who, feist, who twice failed to become leader of the party, is now Chancellor of the Exchequer. Following that, the anti, following that anti-conservative budget... <laughs> It has convinced me that the Conservative Party is now no longer a centre-right party. He just sense, just left the window, just out the window completely. Other senior Tories are urging their colleagues not to panic over the potential threat from the right. David Davis, the former Brexit Secretary, said... The best vaccination against extreme parties is to, is in the success of sensible policies. The more successful the government policies are on economics and on migrants, the safer my colleagues will be in their seats from any attack from any direction. The most important thing for them to remember is not to distract from the delivery that, of that success in the next six months to a year. The threat from the right played a major role in toppling the previous Tory leaders of David Cameron and Theresa May. And the success of UKIP in 2014 European elections contributed to Cameron's decision to hold the EU referendum. Meanwhile, May was finally removed uh, after the Brexit Party secured 30% of the vote in the 2019 European elections. The Conservatives are concerned about the current threat and the stress that reform could see only need to secure a fraction of the support to have an impact on the Tory performance at the next election. So, yeah. They are, they are entering into a panic mode, and it's it, it's funny to see and hear you know this guy say this that you know, oh my god that the party has been been infiltrated. Oh my, the the conservative party is going left wing. Oh my, oh my god, <laughs> you know. But... Sense has completely and truly, utterly left the Conservative Party at this point. It is, it is, it is departed, and it's gone in its car and it is driving along <laughs> off down the motorway because it has very truly left the building. Um, but yeah, it just goes to show you just how crazy certainly the the like the Tory Party has become internally. And um, someone else commented very recently, um, a oh, wide. You know, uh, while I, I understand, you know, talking about this, 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 this political stuff is important. Why don't you talk about policy? Well, the thing is, the Tories are the people in power at the moment, and all this psychodrama, all this panicking, basically means they can't deliver on most of these policies. They can't do a thing because the party is so split they can't even talk about policy. Because you've got this guy, Carruthers, who will come out and say, you're not a conservative, how dare you? This, it, it, it's such a psychodrama. And, and the quicker, honestly, the quicker the Tories fall apart and the quicker we get a general election, the better. And the chances of, of that emerging and certainly happening are going to be, I think, the results of the May general election, meaning we're probably going to have a very interesting summer all over again. But hey, we'll see, probably definitely going into general election, uh, depending how quickly if they, they fall to pieces, but <laughs> oh boy, we'll see, but like I say, we'll be covering that when all that happens, so like I say, guys, please do remember to hit that like, share, and subscribe button, and of course, if you are subscribed to the channel, please do remember to hit the bell button as well, 
That way you'll be alerted whenever we upload a new video or we do a uh, live stream when we go live. So as always, guys, thank you very much for, for your support. Like I say, down below, there are links uh, to help support the channel. Uh, Patreon, Buy Me Coffee, the YouTube Thank You button, the Pony Club as well. As always, guys, like I say, thank you very much for watching. And of course, we'll see you all next time.